Thank you for coming on. Um, Tom Burbage, who's an artist from Manchester. Would you say Manchester? Do you feel like this is home? Uh, yeah, I've from in there. try to say Cheshire, but I live here now, don't I? It's, yeah, it's yeah. the most relevant place that's probably there's been so far in my life. So I always say I'm from Manchester, but I'm quite confused about that myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to say where I'm actually from. And also, if I like try and explain like your work as well, how would you describe it? How would you put it out there? My art's been evolving um, over since I was about 15. So I started doing portraits, very expressionistic and loose. I come from a, like a line of artists in my family that always drew realism. And uh, going through uni, they were always becoming looser and looser. I was quite interested in abstraction and removal of image and de deconstructed images. So I did that all the way through my like early twenties, painting things, subjects, and then removing the reality in that over say 10, 10 pa paintings. So the last painting would be a very abstract version of the photograph and the, the first version would be more realistic. And I found that towards the end of the line, I'd be more interested in that outcome because there was a lot less going on and it leaves the mind to kind of find narrative. So we kind of just chased that for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So you, I just did away with complete subject and just, just deal with forms, color, texture to make someone feel a certain way and put them in a certain space and play with indicators and ultimately just instinctively make them now. They're not really, you don't have to think too much about uh, what it is that I'm doing. It just kind of happens now and it's something that's just in me and it comes out, that's how it feels. I try and just nurture it, let it come out and try not to get in the way of it too much is it consciously, which sounds a bit... It's so mad to me as well. A bit, a bit odd, but it just, the more you get involved in it, the worse it gets. You have to kind of like witness it as if it's just, I'm someone else as well sometimes and that's what generates the most authentic style. So interesting because I feel like obviously I've, you showed me your like portrait, more real realism work. Yeah. What what changed from doing that to thinking like actually you know what this isn't for me like I want to go into the abstract. I just had like a profound sense of I don't know when I came came to a point where I was confident in the science of painting and I could make colors and I could get the desired outcome and make a a, a painting and look how I wanted. I realized that I was just showing off. <laughs> It felt like I was showing off. I'm not trying to discredit realistic painters or realism painters or hyper-realism because it's a crazy technique. It's a lot of labor. It's impressive. It's, a, it's talent. But it feels like me, by giving someone a ticket to, to the whole story, it just seems like quite a, a generic, easier thing to do and ask someone for that value. And, you know, to get someone to see value in something that isn't anything and they have to try and ultimately add the context is, is for me, is a harder challenge. It might be easier to paint an abstract, but creating value in an image, which is built up of textures to a group of people in a room, you'd argue that that was a bit more of a harder sell. Mm -hmm. And that's what interests me because it, it's relying on people being open-minded. Yeah. So I, ultimately I just felt like I was not adding anything to the market. And I also wanted to find an authenticity in me and my style. And I felt like I was just copying masters of people that I'd studied, like Lucian Freud, Francis Bacon, uh, figurative painters like Jenny Savile. And uh, quite frankly, they just weren't ever going to be as good because I knew that I was just not doing something authentically. And the, it was the paint and the layers and the way it was composed that interested me more than what I was painting. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, yeah, yeah, it was a fight to not be generic. Maybe that's why I've ended up doing, you know, arms black and that. Maybe I just got an insecurity about being generic and me. But may stay, stay from, stem from just being a twin or <laughs> something deep down where you just want to be an individual. Yeah, yeah. And everything to be at, in that kind of core uh, feeling of trying to stand out. Well, I think hard. it's interesting as well, like with abstract, you're actually looking within, I guess, to create something that doesn't exist. So you're having to look into your self to see what you want to create rather yeah. than looking at a subject and being like, right, I'm going to replicate that. Yeah. You're actually doing something that doesn't exist. And I yeah. think that's quite interesting. Like, where does your inspiration come from that? Because when you put it together, it's not a subject, it's, it's just coming from within. Yeah, so it's, 
ultimately I'm inspired massively by a lot of people that are creative. You're inspired by a, a lot of things. You're absorbing everything around you and you're making reactions and it excites you and you want to dress a certain way because you want to convey yourself like that and people, you want people to think a certain way about you. And you want that car or you want your room to be like that. And it's ultimately a sensitivity, I think, about how you take in the world. And I think every creative, whether it be a photographer, a stylist, designer is looking at the world in that lens or through that lens. What I do is try and use my, my science, my creating technique or my creative tool, which is painting for whatever reason that is, and just put that out in a very rushed, feels quite, quite a very rushed format, which is, it feels like it's, Everything, it's like everything, it's a download basically. It's everything that I've seen, touched, mm -hmm. felt, remembered, listened to, sniffed, <laughs> you know, everything tasted. I feel like it's just a, a very condensed format of information that is coming out of me in some sort of way that is not really understandable other than the fact that it, it's continuously in that style. And do you have a point where you're like, right, I've taken too long now. This painting's too much. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is this is it. At the start of your painting career, you're trying to make it of value, so you start putting a lot of paint on the canvas because that's value. That's making it luxurious and expensive. It's like using metallic paints. Mm -hmm. You got to go through all these insecurities as a painter to then realize that you should be painting as effective as you can, which is not putting more paint on. I ruin paintings by putting more paint on, and you can do something in an instant that is way more impactful. If you walk in a room and it's just shown to you, your initial uh, emotion looking at that is, wow. And then you can paint for 40 hours on a piece and it could be so developed and so technical and it's just dull. Yeah. So you're trying to find out a balance of working for instinct and that initial impact only. And I think that can come quite quickly sometimes, but sometimes you can have to work on it. And, you know, you can be laboring away for six, seven times more than the, the painting before it. But mm -hmm. I'd say every 10 paintings that I do, I'm given one where it just kind of happens as a residual like bonus mm -hmm. to just laboring away at other stuff. Because I have to stay quite curious, I'm curious. And I mean that in a way that when I'm painting, I don't really know what it is either that's coming out of me, but that's why I'm addicted to it because it's this self-awareness and you're trying to really calibrate and diagnose why there's changes happening and why you're trying to paint certain forms and what it is that confuses me. You said it the other day to me, like, what, why do I like motorbikes and cars so much? What is it about them? That's basically what I'm doing all the time. Why am I painting like this? Yeah. What is it about the world that I'm trying to say, do, represent or not represent? Because I'm not representing it. And it's like having this awareness and falling into yourself becomes quite attractive and addictive because everything else just disappears. It's escapism, isn't it? Do you feel like there's there's like chapters as well? Do you feel like there's shifts where it will change? I feel like I would say recently, having now known you and known your work, it feels like there's a shift going on at the moment with your style. Yeah. Even from when you did the, the show in here, it feels like now it's taken a bit of a different turn. Mm. What, what do you feel like motivates that and how does that happen? Yeah, when, when changes come about in the work, sometimes it's usually a bad change, to be fair, but I'd, I'd agree recently it's become kind of, uh, more feels simple in the way that I want to paint. And I think what's happened is I've exposed myself to more environments and new things in the last year, I'd say. I've overcome certain things that I've overcome, it sounds terrible. <laughs> Having a kid. <laughs> Having a small kid is stifling and now that's kind of contained and compartmentalised and, you know, uh, surveyed in the way that impacts my life. I know what it means now to have a kid and the load of it. And it's, it's the overcoming of certain things and it's the, probably a desire to be simple and be less kind of uh, chaotic and reduce things and be very definite about what I want to do and not be influenced and... Uh, if it's a maybe, then it's a no, and trying to follow that, but in visual senses, do away with it with a tap around the idea mm -hmm. and go back to the, the core and what actually comes out. Because I lose myself painting, yeah, the style, it becomes quite 
you start trying to regurgitate old images and you realize that you're just painting five images that have already existed, but there's a new version. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes I stop for a week or two weeks and zoom out, go through all of my work and study it as if it's not my work and think, I go through Instagram and think, what are they, what, right, where's my favorite 10 paintings? Right, what is it that lives in them that I like the most? And I like, zoom into that and I go into that and I think, what is it about that that I like the most? Like, what is it between these five that's linking those five? Why am I painting things like that over there that don't tie into this? That's just a runoff, that's a failure. But just because other people like it online doesn't mean that it should be one of mine. And that's why I have to do, I have to fire mm -hmm. through it and, and take a break and then go again and not get in the way of it again. And that's what's been happening. I've just been doing very fluid work and just thinking, well, what if I just left that now and started just painting on white more mm -hmm. and stop overusing color? I feel like the ones that you did the other day when we went out, there was a lot of white. You know what I mean? It was very simplistic, but it, and like you say, with that rush thing too, it, it didn't take long before it looked like such a developed piece. Yeah. And I was, I was really fascinated by the fact that even after a few marks and a few movements and changes to the canvas, it became something quite bold and impressive, but in like the space of 20, 30 minutes in some yeah, it's cases. it's nice to hear, because it's, I, when, you, when you're painting all the time, you, you're always thinking of what, what else you can do, and it's always like what's missing in that, not what's happened. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I think about, and I think I recognize that myself. When you're taking something that's made just a white panel, and then you just put a gesture on it, then you've given it a persona immediately. And sometimes you give it a persona that isn't that attractive to look at, but other times you do something, it, a simple line can make it into a story. And it's fascinating that. And the more you leave, I feel like there's more meaning there for other people to kind of uh, having to think about. And that negative space represents the bit of a painting where the person looking at it, it's on them then to start thinking and you're not giving too much away. So I haven't really done too much more. Well, I haven't done much more work on those. I've just added some staining and trying to just work with what was there, what we did outside to keep that kind of organicness to it. It's interesting. I feel like as well, it's, do you find that it's difficult when, for example, you've got a deadline for like a show coming up, a gallery, like you've got to showcase some work or do you also find it difficult the impacts of social media when you say before about going through your Instagram if there's something that you've done and it's like 500 people fuck with it or yeah. there's one where 10 people do you like well actually the one that 10 people did I like but the 500 yeah. kind of throws you off a bit it's the hardest thing because you have to stay authentic and it's like anything isn't it it's like when you're creative anything you're doing creatively versus commercialism and it's going to sound quite ruthless but most people have bad taste <laughs> 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 and I've been one of them in the past. I feel like most people just don't have that space to to appreciate niche mm -hmm. things. And there's a reason why certain clothing brands that are probably being a bit more experimental don't particularly do as well as people that do basic wear. Because some people just don't want to make a statement or perhaps find it uncomfortable having to explain why they purchase something or if they buy a painting that is more abstract or is a little bit more kind of uh, love or hate, say, they've then got to tell their friends when they come around why they bought it and it, it puts pressure on them. Yeah. If they buy something that's easier as an emotion, like a safe. blue painting or a yellow painting, safe. Oh, that's happy. Oh, that's calming. Blue calming, happy. It's an easy sell for them to then resell to their mates under questioning mm -hmm. or whoever else is going to ask them why they bought that and the justification. And I think it's that it, it falls along like that. And the further you go into abstraction and away from the simple emotions and patents that are more kind of commercial um, in the way that they look, the harder the sell. But I tend to like those ones more. But yeah, you're right. If, if you were doing it all the time, you just wanted to focus on selling more, you'd have to listen to that data. And I try not to. You, you do notice it, you've got two eyes, you know what I mean? Uh, it's you so look interesting, at it, yeah. Is that about? Maybe that's, I have a thing where I'm like, maybe that is stronger, man. Maybe that is better work. Maybe that's better work, but i convinced otherwise sometimes. It's maybe, I think that's too chaotic or I wouldn't want to use that much color now, but maybe it just is. 
sometimes you almost feel like you need someone else telling you like that's better do that more have like, you ever had a mentor in that sense no no nothing because no, i feel like no. most artists do have somebody who's sort of saying like no. maybe try this or maybe do that to develop yes yeah, it speaks to me missy sometimes <laughs> about it you know coming in have a this she goes that's overworked. <laughs> Stop there, you're going to ruin it. She's usually right, mate, to be fair. But she, know, she kind of knows. She, kinda, she, she knows my, what my work should look like and she knows my mood that day. So she's quite good at handling like, the, the machine of me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And do you have days where you'll be in a shit mood and then you'll, you'll find that that means that a paint will be overworked or a day where you're feeling calm yeah. and it's kind of underworked? Overworked, mate. I just do overwork stuff when I'm a bit stressed out on other parts of my life that getting frustrating or there's drama or whatever and there's sick going on or maybe you just don't feel that good uh you just do like dull like theatrical moody really sad <laughs> paintings that are just just dark you know what i mean they become like more classical to look at but do you hold on to that would you then release that and then no no i just don't think it's a success i think it has its own emotion and i always say painting is done when it has its own emotion i can like that one more than that one but they both have to meet a certain criteria for me for them to be put out there. I just feel like, no, nah, I'm not posting that. That's just not even good. That's mm-hmm. just dark and just complex and overly, it just looks cellular. Yeah. I just do like these really, there's like another style that comes out of me when I'm in that space. They become dead. It's like the grotesque to look at. Do you think they would sell to a certain audience? Like, do you think it could be someone People who's going like through them. some I've shit? I've posted like... stuff before that, I've just been passable and I've tried it and then deleted it like two days later and people love it. Some people, it's like a, it doesn't really go with anything else and it, it stifles me so I just delete them. Mm-hmm. So that's one that I'm terrible for is doing something that stifles my own productivity. It has to be sitting, it has to kind of sit in the chain of work and move upwards and forwards in the right trajectory otherwise if it goes like that i have to rein it back because i don't like big jumps yeah i guess if there's a shift in your work as well for a lot of your audience and stuff that can be again too much of a mm. big change can't it? it's like well what that's it man like i try and stay within the what inspires me and yeah that's it and that's that step in that's that conscious coming in and that's what you've got to watch yeah but you know it's truly liberating when you're just paying what you want but i feel like you can't always do that because it has to match your series of work because your lifetime of work some artists like hans hoffman's done it before uh and other painters where it's just sporadic and you can't even tell it's his work but that, that i don't want that i want to sit there with a the style and a certain look so you have to kind of stay in that that membrane which is difficult it's interesting because having seen your early stuff and the realism it's so fascinating that like the more that you grow and the the more it makes me wonder what has happened to the value of those pieces do you know what i mean to have an, an yeah. early piece of your work that is so different from what you do yeah, now yeah. there must be quite a bit of value in that as well yeah, yeah i think they're the good because i've got people that have been buying the work from say eight years ago maybe and at the time they were successful and quite i like them a lot they were super technical very chaotic, it used to just burst in the middle, It'd be a lot of energy to them. But I just see that as me trying to make really exciting work and like I've arrived yeah. type of energy. And uh, I always say to them, like, it's not that I don't like them, it's just they're not relevant to my practice now. So I look at them with my new evolved taste, which everyone changes the taste over time and you mature and your preferences change. You look at it and think it's too busy, mm. but I like it. It's just, I don't want it to be mine. Do you have a back catalog? Do you have like an archive that people can tap into if they wanted to purchase from that? No, no. Luckily, and I don't mean to sound like I'm not boasting at all there, but I don't have many works hanging around for longer than two years. And it's not because of, I'm doing a masses and masses of work and it's all selling. Most of them sell, but I kind of, I've got a production rate now. Uh, I, I paint not that many, really. I don't know what, how, how many is, is a lot, but I say pay two or three to four a month. And then they go off for a show and then I do another show. If I've got a residual amount, I'll put an exhibition on and it all gets divided down. So I rarely have a painting that's longer than two years old mm-hmm. in stock on hand, you know what I mean? And, uh, and for that reason, maybe and uh, what's happened in the past, if I have all the work that sticks around too much, I end up painting over them, they're not safe. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're, yeah. they're around me, they get recovered. <laughs> they get recovered. 
<laughs> so maybe that's why I've not got anything. I have used to have an archive gallery online, but I didn't. I didn't like people. It's like your dirty secrets online. Mm -hmm. I didn't like people going through it, going, ah, right, now I know. <laughs> yeah.